Saturday with just us guys. Cartoons and no girls. Boy, Grandpa, this year is great. <laughs> the one invention that made Saturdays without women possible, store-wide clearance sales. <laughs> So, you want Jetsons or uh, the Flintstones? Uh, surprise me. Okay. Oh, I uh, love the show. Isn't this great? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, goodness. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And now we were going to watch TV. I'm sorry, honey. We can't. Got to get this place straightened up before she gets here. Before who gets here? I'm Mary Ellen Baldwin. Joey, take the popcorn and the milk into the kitchen, pick up your games and, and, and your books and take them in your bedroom, okay? Now, who is Mary Ellen Baldwin? Oh, Grandpapa, she's this girl that I went to school with back in my hometown in Alabama. Grandpapa, the girl had beauty, brains, money. <laughs> she had everything. <laughs> I hated her. <laughs> do <laughs> anyway she called mama when she got in town this morning excuse me honey and she said that she needed to see us grandpapa i do hope that you have another shirt now i am not going to change my shirt for some woman from alabama okay well then change it for me you're the woman i'm talking about <laughs> that must be mama who else has nothing new but come over here and aggravate me Yes, Mama, come right on up. By the way, Nell, if this rich friend of yours is interested in an aging Polish gigolo, I'll be upstairs. Ah, <laughs> uh, Joe, listen, I want you to go in your room and change clothes and pull a tie, honey. Oh, Aunt Nell, do I have to? I mean, don't you want your friend to meet me just the way I am, a good-looking, casual kind of guy? <laughs> yes, honey, I want her to meet a good-looking, casual kind of guy with the tie. So get your casual butt out of here. <laughs> I'll be glad when I'm a rock star, but they don't wear ties. Boy, I told you, you're not gonna be a rock star. You're gonna be president of the NAACP. <laughs> Hi, Ma, come on in. Nell, when Mary Ellen gets here. I know, Ma, you want me to be on my best behavior. No, your best behavior is not good enough. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Now, promise me now. You'll be nice to Mary Ellen. Mama, I was always nice to Mary Ellen. I mean, whenever she would wave at me from her big house up on the hill, I never threw rocks. <laughs> Isn't Daddy gonna be here? Nah, Mama. She's spending the weekend in Atlantic City with a telephone repairman. I tell you, Mama, it's just not fair. I'm the one who reported that phone out of order. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Nell. You know, Addie always liked Mary Ellen. Mama, Addie didn't like Mary Ellen. Nobody liked Mary Ellen. I mean, she was the only kid in our school who had a car. <laughs> hello? Well, hello, Mary Ellen, darling. <laughs> Why don't you come right on up? Apartment 2B. Bye. You know what, Mama? My fondest memory of Mary Ellen was the day her car broke down. Eddie and I stood on the side of the road and we just cheered as that tow truck towed that car away. We were screaming, talk turkey, rich kid. <laughs> I just hope her hair has turned gray and her skin has shriveled up like a prune. <laughs> Why, Mary Ellen, you look stunning. Your complexion's so plum-like. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. And Mama may bear alone. <laughs> Why don't you let me take your coat? Oh, thank you. Oh, what a beautiful sable. <laughs> Hand wash, tumble dry. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm still a kidder. Oh, my husband Bernie bought me that coat. Well, I'm into fun for myself. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nell thinks it's fun not to have a fun. <laughs> Sit down, honey. Thank you. Now, Mary Ellen, tell me just what's happening back home. Oh, everything back home is just fine. So, Nell, how are you? 
Oh, just busy, 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 busy. You know how it is working for a publishing company. Yes, I heard you had a new career. Oh, it's nothing really. I just happen to be the top assistant editor at Magdalene and Loud. Oh. As a matter of fact, the book that I'm editing now will definitely be a bestseller. Oh, what is it called? Well, it's the unauthorized autobiography of Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Behind the pointed ears. <laughs> It certainly is good to see the both of you. It's so good seeing you again, Mary Ellen. You know, Nell, we ought to go back and visit our old friends. Oh, would it be so good seeing your father's church again. Well, you better hurry up. They're tearing it down next week. What? Well, yes. Mama Maybelle, that's why I'm here. Actually, my husband Bernie bought the property, and we are building condos. Condos? You are tearing down my husband's church to build housing for yuppies? <laughs> yes. And the best part of the deal is the money you will be getting out of it. I don't care about the money. Mm -hmm. Let's not speak too hasty. <laughs> Just what kind of numbers are we talking here? Well, when we went through the church records, we found out when your father was minister, he loaned the church $10,000 to repair the leaky roof. I remember that. It was the last of our life savings. Mama Maybelle, here is $10,000, $5,000 for you, and $2,500 a piece for Loretta and Mary. Why, thank you. I'll see that my little sister gets her share. Forget the money, Mary. Mm. And you, you take your cheap hamster fur and hightail it out of here. <laughs> Ma, are you forgetting that she's a friend? Well, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I mean, we are building another church right across town. I don't want another church. I want the old one. Excuse me, honey. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You have to forgive my ma. She's not quite herself. She didn't take her nap today. Look, honey, why don't you just... take your fur and... Why don't you just call us later, all right? <coughs> Buy another check. <laughs> Ma! They're not getting away with it now. Mama, what's wrong? It's just a building. What's wrong with condos? I mean, yuppies can't sleep in their BMWs. I am going back to Alabama and save our church. Ma, Mary Ellen told you they are building another church right across town. It's just like you, Nell. You wouldn't go back home and save that church. You wouldn't do it for me. You wouldn't do it for the family. You wouldn't do it for your father, your very dear departed father in heaven. All right, Mama, I'll go. Who asked you? This is where you grew up, huh? Yep. <laughs> Ma, please don't cry. You promised me you weren't going to cry. I promised you I wouldn't cry on the airplane. Well, we're on the ground now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this brings back so many memories. You know, Joey, this is where Nell slobbered all over me just before she was baptized. <laughs> me. That was Loretta. <laughs> now, may I go outside and play in the cemetery? Because I like to read all the names on the gravestones. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that can be fun, especially if you don't see your own. Get out. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, ladies, excuse me, but uh, Sunday services are over. Who are you, young man? I'm from the Wrecking Company. Oh, you're the one who's gonna run the bulldozer into the house of God. <laughs> you heathen. <laughs> I'm not a heathen, I'm a Methodist. Same thing. <laughs> and I'm not running a bulldozer into this house of God. I'm using dynamite. Where do you live, young man? I can get some dynamite too, you know. Mama, please. The man is just trying to do his job. Nell, you're not a fighter. Mama, what is there to fight about? This is just an old, cold, drafty building. I mean, every time Daddy gave his sermon, he had to have a vaporize on the pulpit. <laughs> Nell. Hi. Mama Maybelle, I'd like to speak to you. 
How dare you show your face in this church, Mary Ellen? Mama Maybelle, please hear me out. I want you to know that I do not hold it against you for throwing me out of your apartment. Well, good. And you won't hold it against me when I throw you out of this church. <laughs> please, Mary Ellen might have come here to tell us something very important, like, here's your checks. Well, as a matter of fact, here they are. And Mama Maybelle, I understand your feelings. But this church is going to be torn down whether you take this money or not. We're not taking that money, and you are not tearing down this church. Listen, on behalf of my sweet little sister and myself and my sentimental little mama, give me those checks. I knew you'd be sensible, Nell. Well, honey, you do need a new church. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so cold in here, not that you would notice, but it's so cold in here that the nose on your fox is beginning to run. Bless you, Reverend. Praise the Lord. Nell, oh, oh my goodness, Maybell. It's so nice to see you. You know, Mary Ellen told me you two were in town. George Dixon, how can you call yourself a man of God and let them tear down this church? Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Believe me, Maybell, believe me, tearing down this church is an improvement. Really, I mean, the place is old. Darling, look, it's falling apart. Uh, see there? Right up there, there's a draft that... Uh, uh, Bless you, Reverend. Whose side are you on, Nell? But I mean, it is so cold in here. When I give my sermon, I got to put a vaporizer inside the pool. Reverend, I think we better be going. You know, we have to pick up that new organ I'm having sent over from Germany. We were very lucky to get it. They had to tear down an old church over there. You are tearing down churches all over the world. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you very much. It's nice seeing you. I'm going to see you later now, okay? Bye-bye, okay. Reverend. Bye-bye, love. Mom, please, I know what you're going through. <laughs> well, honey, you just can't be so sentimental of an old church. Nell, I don't expect you to understand. This church has never meant as much to you as it does to me. But you don't... Oh, I'm going down and see Mayor Watson. You mean old kickback under the table, Watson? <laughs> Here, Nell! You know, that cemetery is so cool, they have got a Moses Harper born in 1872. I know. That's my great-granddaddy. There were five other Harpers buried next to him. Are those his kids? No, those are his wives. <laughs> he was real active in the church. Funny, Aunt Nell. Oh, I was just thinking about the first time that Addie and I recited the Lord's Prayer here. Let's see. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> Up until I was seven, I thought God's first name was Howard. <laughs> Hey, come here, sit down. Come, come here, sit. Just sit right here. Now, <clears throat> you are now sitting on the pew where me, Mama, and Little Daddy used to sit. We used to sit right here when my daddy used to preach to the congregation from up there. And, and Addie and her family, they sat over there. Boy, we used to pass some notes. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you write? Well, it was just silly stuff. See, Addie would write, Nell, do you like Mary Ellen's new dress? And I would write back, no. <laughs> it's ugly, but not as ugly as her feet. <laughs> you ever get caught? Uh, did I get caught? I got caught every Sunday. I mean, every Sunday. And you know what? It was always Addie's fault. That girl would always start to laugh just as the choir would stop singing. And my daddy would raise one eyebrow and look straight at me. Always at me. Always at me. Oh, boy. You know what, Joey? My daddy had a wonderful booming voice. I mean, he could feel this whole room. Like, I used to love it. Like, he would get up here, and he would look out over the congregation. And then he would um, clear his throat. <coughs> <laughs> then he would take, take a couple of sips of water.
<laughs> that he would just stand here and look over the congregation until there was complete silence. And then it, when there was complete silence, a baby would cry. <laughs> See, now, he had three sermons. One was hell and damnation. Now, I always knew we were going to get that one. It would always be the Sunday after the Saturday night that I had stayed out past curfew. <laughs> always. He would get up here, he'd look at his scriptures, and he'd look out, and he'd walk over, he'd look at me, and he'd say, Now, we're gonna talk about sinners. <laughs> She knew that I had stayed out past curfew. That man, I'm telling you. Wait, and he had another one. Uh, it was the money sermon. I said, e Joey, you cannot yell hell and damnation at people when you're trying to pick their pockets. <laughs> so my daddy would turn on the charm, and he would give you his money smile. <laughs> then he would tell one of his funny stories. He told some good ones. Wait, here's one. I like this one. <clears throat> There was this man who got into this cab driver's cab. And he said to the cab driver, ain't it wonderful that we having a Baptist convention here in town? Amen? Amen. <laughs> and the cab driver turned to the man and said, what's so wonderful about that? Them Baptists come down here with the Ten Commandments in one hand and a $10 bill in the other hand, and they don't break neither one of them. <laughs> well, I know you are some good Baptist, and you ain't about to break the Ten Commandments. But as sure as I'm standing here, you're gonna break a $10 bill. <laughs> Pass the collection plate. And then he'll put on this money stare. <laughs> and the money just come rolling in. I'm not talking that silver stuff. I'm talking about money would come rolling in. And then would you, wait, my favorite sermon was the ones on love. Oh, wow. Uh, Daddy said, tell some good stories. He was really a great storyteller. Anyway, there was this one about this little girl who just loved her teddy bear. Now, that is strange, because, you know, I had just completely forgotten about that now just it's coming back to me I don't know I I it's it's cuz I'm in daddy's church anyway <clears throat> this little girl she really loved her teddy bear I mean the fur was all thin yeah. and, and the stuffing was falling out but she didn't care cuz she loved her teddy bear anyway, one day she came in and she caught her little sister, who was sick in bed, playing with her teddy bear. That mean little girl went over to her and she said, that's my bear. <laughs> she took it back. She ripped the arm off. <laughs> then she, she looked over and she saw her little sister, lying there all alone, sick. But she gave her back the teddy bear. Anyway, I, 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 I used to sit up here and I used to think, wow, that, 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 that's a wonderful story. See, I realized Daddy was talking about me. The mean little girl was me. But Daddy was real kind. See, he didn't tell the congregation that after Loretta got well, I took back my teddy bear. <laughs> and I hit her over the head with the tooth. <laughs> I hit her. Yes, I did. My daddy was talking about me. Why you don't used to sing up here? I, I sang out to him. That's right, because I, I, I sat right there, and Addie sang soprano, so she sat over here. I even did my first, I sang my first song up here. My, I mean, I was 
so nervous. I was so scared. But see, I was excited too now. Because I didn't want to let my daddy down. Uh-uh. So I just stood up here just like this. And I looked straight out into the congregation. And I kept my eyes on this little bird on top of Mama's hat. <laughs> Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak. Lord, take my hand, and leave me home. <laughs> oh, no. That was beautiful. Oh. That was the first song you ever sang in this church. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You know, um, right. may, may I go outside and watch the construction workers? Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. How'd it go, Mom? Mm -mm. Uh -uh. It's okay, Mom. Don't you cry. It's all right, Nell. I guess we all have to learn that we have to let go sometime. What? You know what, Mama? You're just not a fighter. <laughs> what do you mean? Look, I don't care, Mama. I'm going to stay here and fight for my daddy's church, even if I lose, OK? Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, Nell. You know your father is looking down on you from heaven right now with a smile. Yeah, Ma. And I know exactly what he's saying. What's that? Nell, how can you tear up $10,000 worth of checks? 